Well, I'm going to call our regular meeting to order. Welcome, everyone. It's June 20th. Um, first item is uh, set adjust agenda. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I have one thing. Okay. I'd like to add an executive session to discuss contracts, the premature disclosure of which would put the town at a competitive disadvantage. Wow. I like that. Um, well, that's one of the reasons. I had uh, our collective bargaining agreement with the police department. We received uh, correspondence from the local late this afternoon about the contract. They submitted um, the corrections we requested, but you can vote if you want. If we can keep it on the agenda, you can vote to ratify it, and I can authorize me to sign it when the corrections have been made, or we can push it to the July, the, the July meeting. What you have, your call. We got a long. I didn't. See That's on the agenda. I know. We yeah, let's sh let's that. just shift it because we, we don't yeah, want to put okay. you just because we don't want to put you in a position okay. without yeah. us. We didn't it. put it in because we didn't get correspondence we didn't until it. like four o'clock. Right. Right. So let's okay. push that one. But off. we don't want to, even though we trust you. We don't want to put you in a position where you sign something we don't see. Which where? Which, totally which, fine. Where is it? Yeah, it's not on here. Item six. Oh, there it is. Okay. Good. Anything else? <laughs> Can't get rid of. So we're going to um, delete item six and we're going to add an executive session. Do we have a VSA yeah, or a check? Uh, the, 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 right. Uh, Kay was asking for the statute reference for the executive session. It's 313 it's something. Subsection one, two, or three. Pick one. <laughs> well, it's the one about contracts. Well, maybe we can just look at that. I don't have my phone. My kids have it. Can we pull up? Uh, Paul says one will cover us. One will cover us. All right. So, uh, could I have a motion to motion to may approve an amended agenda? Excellent. Second. And a second. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Hey, that's everybody. So motion carries. Um, communication from the audience. Anybody here to communicate anything that's not on our agenda tonight? Tracy, could you state your name? Yes, I'm Tracy Martin. I'm your community development coordinator. And I just have a tiny piece of good news to share for fun. So that you do some. Um, we we happy, to, happy to report that the Hardwick Downtown Partnership received a grant, the tree planting grant that we've been chasing. It's a grant for $33,487. Um, they're going to be working in collaboration with the Conservation Commission and uh, my office and Jeff and Jeff, tree our tree warden, um, to do tree planting around the downtown. This is from the uh, a partnership of ANR, the Urban and Community Forestry Program, and the Chittenden County uh, RPC. So, anyway, so, just wanted to say. Good job. But please well, don't plant them so close to the road like they are in Chittenden County. <laughs> because you cannot drive okay. there, plant them every day in Chittenden County on new streets in new villages <coughs> they're building south burlington and you can't drive down the street you can't meet vehicles can't meet because the trees yeah. are in the road <laughs> well, they're to beautiful speak to that concern part of our what was special about this particular grant proposal is that we are doing an adopt a tree program so people who live along streets Ooh. can adopt a tree so it's out of right of way right. but yet yeah, might still shade the mm -hmm. walking sidewalk yeah, off the trees so. though yeah. All right. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Any other communication from the audience? Thank you. Paul, can you say your name? Uh, Paul Fix, Hardwick. I have two things. One, I have resigned as chair of the board of Northeast Kingdom Broadband. Oh. I remain on the executive committee. I <laughs> remain your rep until otherwise decided. Which really means I'll be able to give Hardwick more attention because I don't have that broader picture, which is probably good. Um, any question, I'd be happy to talk to you about that. But the most important reason I'm here is to introduce Ramonda Parchment. Hello. Ramonda is an intern at the Hardwick Gazette, with, where I am an editor. She will be covering the Hardwick Select Board meetings for the foreseeable future. And she is That's a, a long time. 
She's a student. <laughs> she's a student at Castleton, but she's living here in Hardwick with her grandmother, and going to be finishing her degree this summer and fall at Johnson State. So, nice. for the next while, assuming she continues to like what she's doing, she'll help us share what you're doing with the town. Welcome, Great. Amanda. So you are actually going to come to the meetings? Yes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. I really do. And, and, and I hope she's got a tough skin because I'm leaving and she's on her own. Thanks. <laughs> Do you have any questions about any kid? I can answer those. Okay. I'll catch you out of time. All right. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Good yeah, at some point, it'd be nice to get an update on the bill that doesn't have to be tonight. Uh, uh, we're having a meeting this Saturday in Danville with the whole board, and I'll come away from that with some pictures. Awesome. So yeah. maybe next month. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Uh, point of order it's 313, subsection 1, subsection A. 1A contact. Got it. Thank you. Uh, A1. But Paul said we covered three. Got it. Just wanted to. Great. Thank you. Um, any other communication? Yes. Hi. My name is Scott Beck. I'm from St. Johnsbury. And I'm just up here to listen and learn to Hardwick. I'm running for Senate for California District, which includes Hardwick. I'm a five term state representative. and. Uh, my wife and I own the bookstore in St. John's. We're not sure if you've ever been there or not, but um, I'm just, I think it's my third trip up to Hardwick, and I'm just here to listen and learn and see what's going on there. So. You're currently a representative? I'm currently a representative. Yeah, it's St. St. John's Bury, Concord, and uh, Kirby right now. Yeah. Good. Glad you're here. Welcome. Good luck. Anybody else? <laughs> All right. Moving forward. Um, uh, next is approving minutes from last time, which was June the 6th. Motion to approve the minutes from the June 6th meeting. Second. Um, that's something that was very minor. So, um, any discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes as written, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next town manager report, Mr. Opsen. All right, we kept it short today. <laughs> so uh, we'll start with the wastewater plant upgrade update. So the underground storage tank has been removed and site work has been completed for the regrade paving in front of the building. Um, we're still waiting for the subcontractor to show up and put the cover okay, for the anaerobic reactor cell. But other than that install, that project is wrapping up. Wow, the, great. The, the Negley and Chase project is wrapping up. Um, Kristen Leahy and I met uh, last Monday with Albrecht and Elliott Guidehouse Consulting, which is the state's consultant for FEMA work, and the State of Vermont Water Investment Division personnel to go over the first draft of the scoping and feasibility study of the wastewater treatment facility rebuild or replace project. Uh, what's so this is the new Negley and Chase is wrapping up. That yeah. was a project that was a pre-flood, and Correct. now we're this is a new looking forward, making it more flood resilient. This this is the this is the first step in deciding how we're going to address the how we're going to mitigate. So moving forward, go ahead. No, I'm just trying to think of. So I know how we had FEMA had emergency, and then you have fix. So it's up and running now. Mm -hmm. Everything's good now. Mm -hmm. Everything's been replaced. It needs to be replaced. That was cut by the flood. It's functional, let's say. Yes. I mean, obviously, I'm sure there's a few things that we wouldn't do, especially if we're going to redesign it. Correct. Yep. So that's where we're at. So everything that has been done related to the flood, so today, was covered under the emergency or whatever the title is. Yep. What we're talking about here is is the re to, to to make it better. The it's resilience. still FEMA work. Right, but it's different. It's a different, whole different. It's to make pace. it so. So it won't happen again. Bring it up to so codes and standards. Codes and standards. The current flood plane. Okay, so codes flood, and flood codes and standards. Yes. yes. Um, because I'm just trying to get the point I'm trying to get is our plan is back to functioning at 100. percent May not be perfectly yeah. pretty and everything great, but it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. Yep. Yeah. As it's supposed to do. It. Correct. We're, we're up and running. That's good. That's, so, a, that's a good place to be. So they have, they provided us with three options, which are 
rebuild the facility that option one the, like, the entire facility? no just re re headwork re about that. bring it up to codes and standards basically put the controls the controls the process on the roof yeah and the lagoons basically stay just the process stays the same yeah. the yeah. control building is just elevated yep the other one is to level that building yeah. and rebuild it and the difference is between that is one is wet flood proofing and the other is dry flood proofing and then the third option is to rebuild a facility elsewhere that is not the lagoon process but rebuild the facility in the lagoon and put in a sequential batch reactor in the lagoon so completely new process same area different process different process. same, yep. same real estate and right. that would be built up right. inside right. the lagoon with concrete tanks and so so on and so forth I drive. and those are right. kind of the, the progressive price and they're all priced but you know they're going to start out the, right. the wet proof it means it's going to get wet stuff yes but not be ruined well, dry I mean, that's that's the debate. No, right. I'm pushing for <laughs> no. It's not a good plan. Dry flood no, proofing. Uh, yeah, dry flood proofing means yeah, it stays dry. Yeah, and then relocation obviously is going to be the right big one. So. Um, so once we determine what track we will proceed with, so we have to put something forward to FEMA, and FEMA either says no, this isn't going to work, or yes, we can do this, and then the funding package starts to get put together. So who decides which? We point? all collectively decide what path we we're going as to go. in select board, the state, the town, the, the state, state, federal people. government. Yeah, this is a big project because we ultimately, regardless, are going to have some match into this. I'm hoping it's going to be minimal. But yeah. chance, I mean, we got to be realistic with it. I have said some from, of the lifting is going to be ours. I had I have said from the beginning that we cannot put the burden. On our 800 great payers. Right. No, I agree, 100. percent But I think also, where, from talking to you, it seems like your eyes have also been on the, that whatever we end up with is something we're going to own likely for the next 40, 50 years. Right. So how, what is the cost of operating and maintaining that? Right. Right. And for example, a, a, an SBR facility, sequential, sequential batch reactor facility, is an energy. Sorry. Energy, energy intensive. Energy and facility so the cost of operation is going to go so the lagoons right now are the best the cheapest cheapest simplest the, the most cost-effective way to treat wastewater even with all of our, our um, low sludge yeah. so dry dry flood is a good option for us yes. I mean it, not to say we're going to do that now but it's a really good option. well that's what we're pushing for because yeah. we don't want to we would so our to get into the weeds so our influent pumps would be dry um, submersible pumps <coughs> so they can be wet and still pump yeah. where in the past we're 27 feet below the base flood base flood elevation the basement the headworks of the plant fills up with water and those pumps are the first thing to go out and that's what pumps our wastewater into the lagoon that's a very essential part of our process right because once it's in the lagoons chances are it's going to be safe our lagoons are. They did not flood. They did not flood. They, did not flood. No, they will not. They weren't flood. compromised. No, today. not at all. No. And they're, they're fresh and new now. Yep. So, yep. cool. That's a good job. Yep. Good work. Um, so, I can skip the rest of my paragraph on that because we just went over it in detail. Um, we have sent back the draft, or the town, my office has sent back the draft proposals, request for proposals with comments to NBDA for procurement of a consultant for the scoping and feasibility study for the development of Creamery Road, which includes relocating the fire department, town garage, and working with Hardwick Rescue to locate a new facility on the property. This consultant will be paid for by the Municipal Technical Assistance Program, MTAP. So we're just plugging away on that. Ho hopefully the, the ball is in an NBDA's court, so hopefully they can pick that up and run with it. So basically this is just getting the request for a proposal out there. For an engineer, for an engineer to, to design a plan. A complex. Yep. Was there any news, and you might not know this, but they had uh, applied for a congressional grant. Is there any news about that? Yeah, it's been submitted. Yeah, there's, um, there's several processes. Mm -hmm. I think probably August or September. I know they send their list forward in October. So we should hear something. 
um, Watershed Protection and Flood Prevention Operations Program. This is another mouthful. <laughs> Sponsored by the NRCS, which is the Natural Resource Conservation Service, federal government would be willing to do a preliminary investigations report, which can take up to 12 months to complete on the Cooper Brook River corridor in the village. So the Lamoille gets a ton of uh, attention, but we had some major flooding problems on the Cooper Brook. Mm -hmm. sure did. And um, that in the town gets overlooked sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, we want, really basically what we need is we need to submit a letter to the NRCS um, requesting their assistance for the project. Uh, the initial phase of the project has no financial obligation on our part, and it's there's several phases that are covered. It's just the last phase, which is years down the road of construction and implementation, where there might be a match. Um, but they would come in and look at that area and give us guide guidance on how to plan and develop that area of town. So I think, I think um, that could be really helpful, right, to get that ball rolling because. I mean, yeah, the one thing I feel I've learned on this board is you can't really move forward with any sizable project without all your planning done. Right, yeah. And this, I mean, we're looking at 25, 30, 40 years down the road for the development of the town and the village. And that's an area that we will definitely be expanding. It will need to. It will need to. Right. Also, Even though it's got flood issues, it's going to be the area to do it. Right. Also, something about the confluence of Cooper Brook and the Lamoille River yeah. right there is a real, is yeah. they combine into a really. <clears throat> Who cleaned out the, uh, the debt to state on Route 14? How come we did that? Sort of our responsibility now because they put in that retention. Because I, I asked about the responsibility that we, we switch. They do it sometimes, we do it sometimes. And it used to be off and on. No, I just, but, yeah. I was curious as to what. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we did that at the same time. We came, came up the trail park and cleaned that out too at the same time. Yeah, we could have do the other side of the map, but we're just running down the road. <coughs> Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> did you want a motion so to have Opie write a letter to the... I don't, yeah, so would you, would you be oh. okay if I request their assistance? Unofficially. You want, so I can, I can... You, so you do want a motion? Sure. So I'll make the motion mm -hmm. that we um, have ask uh, the town manager to write a letter um, requesting assistance with the project to NRCS. Watershed Protection and Flood Prevention Operations Program. That. That's an, what she said. It's an acronym. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, aye. 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 Nope. Sorry. Thanks, everyone. Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. Fourth bullet down, the pedestrian bridge update. Um, the project received two bids, which were open last Friday. The two bidders were CCS and JPC card. Uh, CCS is out of Morrisville, JPC card's out of Barton. CCS bids was, bid was rejected due to incomplete information requested in the bid package. Their first bid was 2.8 million, and their revised bid came just over 3.5 million. JPC cards bid came in at 4.2 million. The bids broke out the bridge and the retaining wall as two separate amounts, which is required if we are planning on getting reimbursement from FEMA to rebuild the wall. It is my understanding as well as the project team to include, in con to include the contractors looking at the project that this work must be done concurrently due to the site limitations. We have a meeting with the USDA on Monday to discuss next steps. I have the bids here with me. Um, if you want to discuss, we can go over the, the breakout, but uh, GPC card, their bridge project bid number was 1.7, and uh, CCS, their, their bridge breakout, which is an incomplete bid, so we can't even consider it, was 900000 So it still gives us a shortfall for that project of about four. <coughs> if if what? If if that low bid was taken at nine hundred thousand, yep. it would give us a shortfall of that project for about four hundred thousand dollars for the bridge. And then there's going to, if we choose to do the FEMA side of it, there's going to be a match to that. There's so that includes the that. Match. That should be covered at nine ninety percent. So the that includes the match. <clears throat> that four hundred thousand. For the bridge or for the whole project? For the whole project. The whole bridge and law. Yeah. 
If you took that lowest bid, which we can't. Which we can't. Which we can't because it wasn't. Yeah, good luck with figuring that one out. So the plan, the plan is what I'm going to request from USDA is we do a shortened rebid, 15 day rebid, and really pound the pavement looking for contractors and try to get some more bids. Um, so I don't think we're. I, that's fine. I, that's great for next step. But I, so the reality is, I don't see us getting a, a bid. Four hundred thousand dollars or less. So where does that shortfall money come from? So I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at you oh, guys. so I think. I mean, if my my feeling is, if we had a bid where we only had a four hundred thousand dollars shortfall, to me that seems uh, surmountable given support we've had from various uh, funders for this project already. So I think our first step would be to go to those funders and say look, we, we're going to need a little more, and this is why, here's a bid, we could take right, it, and we do the project, right? Like, we could do that. But the what we need is we need a bid that's in that range, so within within striking distance, striking distance that is actually responsive bid that's responsive to what we requested. Did CCS not, didn't you ask, didn't you tell me, did you ask CCS to break it down, and they chose not to do that? They did. They broke they it down. Did. They broke it down and raised the price. Right. <laughs> and did they give you a reason for that? Yeah, they said it was in their original their bit, but it wasn't. But it we, wasn't. Can't, we can't make the math work and understand how that was in the original bit. No, because that was about 700000 or something, right? It was a 2.8 to uh, 3.5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't just leave $700,000 on a table and not know where it was. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> Zero's in the wrong I mean, place. You can, I got the two bits here. You yeah, no, I don't need to see that. So. Yeah. I'm more concerned about the legitimacy or the, the likelihood that we're going to be able to find another contractor that's even going to be. Because the first so thing they're going to do is read the story and say, I ain't doing it for, you know, I ain't doing it for less than that. I wouldn't. Unless I, nobody's that hungry right now, I don't think. There's, still, there's a lot of work out there right now still. Yeah. Next summer there'll be a lot. A lot more people looking for work. What's, I mean, the, what's the ideal timing where it's out there? It's bed, definitely it's next closed. summer now. So, it's June. one oh, yeah. of the contractors has been engaged with the bridge manufacturer and they, they say that if they order the bridge in the next couple of weeks, they could get it here by November. Is that CK? <laughs> <laughs> so, we don't talk about CCS anymore because it's right. not a viable bid. So, they're right. out. We have one bid. Yeah. So, we're talking about 4.5, 4.2 million. can't accept million. one bid. That USDA will definitely tell us. All right. We'll back so, we on. have to yeah. Yeah. receive other bids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that bridges, that's what we need to do next. They need to that's sharpen it. their pencil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. We just need we to gotta, try again. We got to keep moving forward. More, I got two more carry on um, bullets. I thought it was short tonight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have one more property to be considered for a buyout. This property is located on the corner of Wilkes Street and Sawmill Lane. Properties on both sides are already being considered. So that's. We don't consider it. What was brought to me. It's not we don't we're not, we're not considering it. Being just, or the well, state is. The, they would they will. It's just whether or not we're willing to start the process with this this last property. I've I've been told it's the last property that I'm going to be asked. But, Isn't the deadline? No, we're still we're still. Doing. Well, I don't this think we can say this isn't the state okay. hazard mitigation. Okay. I don't think okay. we can say no to anybody, any okay. resident that wants to do it. Fair enough. I, I, we said yes to others, right? Yep, we can say no all the way. Especially one of these sides. Yep. It would be wrong. Okay, so. good. Um, and then last Tuesday, June 25th, Hardwick will be hosting the BCDP conference at the townhouse. Next Tuesday. Vermont Community Delta. Tuesday, last, June 25th. You said last Tuesday. Oh, okay. this is the last thing. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Um, at the townhouse, there will be approximately 150 people in attendance. There won't be any parking problems because we have it under control. So if you see a large group of people walking around town, please welcome them to Hardwick. Thank you. That's it for me. Great. You should tell some kids to put up a lemonade stand. In the yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. Or spray paint us all. Oh my gosh. Hey, where? Is that enough? Too soon. Too much good. Enough. Yeah. Thank you, thank I you. I got more. But, well, that's quite a bit. Carry on. All right. What? Well, if we're going to carry on, we're moving to Tom Fadden for the Road Foreman Report. 
I ain't got nothing. He took it all the time. Well, took all I didn't mention anything about the road. Huh? I didn't mention anything about the road. Well, we ain't been doing nothing on the road. We ain't got enough guys. Why not? Huh? Why not? Well, everybody's on vacation. Okay. You know, that, that time of year where everybody uses up their time instead of losing it. But I've seen trucks running around to say, oh, yeah. Wake up, yeah, there's so. two or three of us every now and then. So. <laughs> all right. What are you doing? But anyways, uh, we were all caught up on grading. We were. Until the rain. So. But they seem held held up pretty good, so so far, anyways. Uh, I know we got a little bit of wash over before Charter Farms way, but I figured with the downpours coming today, it weren't worth going over there and grading, mm -hmm. fixing it, and then have a, having by the farm there wash out again. So uh, we already mentioned the ditch work we did down on South 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 Main. Uh, we've been hauling material back to the shop, uh, some stay mats, so we can get ready to cover up some of the roads there that we uh, need to resurface that we already have stay mat on. Oh, what else? We're getting ready to do uh, sand, hopefully, here pretty pretty soon. Hope he's supposed to meet with Kenny there next week about his screener. Uh, crushing that should be coming in towards the end of July. Ooh, 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 ooh. Back up. Which one? Sand. We're going to screen our own sand? Mm -hmm. No, we're not going to do it. We're going to see if Kenny, Kenny gonna, said he has a guy. Kenny's going to supply that. Is that okay? Yep. Are we, we don't have enough guys to do the work we have. Don't be taking on no more time. No, we're, we're Kenny's going to supply a guy okay. and a machine to do the screen. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're pretty well stretched right now, anyways. That's uh, right. Exactly. Uh, so, hopefully, Monday, weather permitting, we're going to start on the sidewalks, digging those up. This side. Our side. Oh, well, why didn't we put that out to bid? So, these guys aren't, had, these aren't sidewalk guys. We, had, we, we ended up asking, and there was no way. Because they were, we, the way it was going to be put out, Danny, was that we were still going to have to dig it out and prep it, and we we're going to yeah. have someone just come in and pour it. That's all we had the money for. Uh, by us doing it, we could actually do both sides of the streets ourselves. So, I'm, I mean, it's like last year, we, I think it took us, what, two and a half months, mm -hmm. I think, to do that side over there. I mean, it weren't an everyday process, you know, taking us away from the other stuff we need to do. So like then, it's like fill-in work? It, it, it more or less is because if anything, uh, the concrete trucks, they usually show up here by 6.30 in the morning. And then there's only, only usually after we get it all poured and done, there's only two of us sitting there. Then the rest of the guys take off and then go, go, go back on the roads and work. So, but that's the only way that we can get it done because I think we've got, what, maybe 30,000 left? Something like that. And at the time, they were going to charge us like three hundred dollars a yard just to pour it in place. So, but. and that was with you doing all the prep and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, carry on. I don't want. Danny's all disappointed now. I just uh, get sick of uh, banging my head against the wall with you people. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. So, before the record. For the record, you would prefer those types of. I prefer uh, that the highway maintenance department did mm -hmm. highway maintenance, and capital improvements were done by contractors mm -hmm. that are special in the trade. Not that they can't do a good job; that's not their job. Their job is not concrete. Their mm -hmm. job is not to do sidewalk work, and their job. There's plenty of things that are not getting done under the highway maintenance. Job description. I could take anyone in this room for a busload ride around town and show them overgrown everything, ditches that are not working. You know, there's just the list. There's infrastructure. There's always something to do, and and it's no different than having the town manager be the grant administrator and and project yeah, manager yeah. on these grants. We don't have. Yeah. We're too thin in our people. We've added dozens of, of projects in the last two years and literally no staff to, to speak of doing the actual physical work. So that's my point. Thank you for, yeah. thank you. Well, I probably shouldn't tell you that we're gonna be mowing on the week of the 8th then. That's good. The 8th of, the July. 8th of July, August, September, November? No, 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 no. Two tractors, <laughs> yeah, no, no, two tractors no, 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 just for the week. Uh, 
That's it. Yeah, but there's other stuff. You know, there's other stuff. There's oh, there's, there's, there's thousands. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to argue with anyone. Wait, else. no, that's so, your point. Let me just add, so no, this quiet. grant, this sidewalk grant, was from 2021. Right. That was extended because the work didn't get done. That's right. And then it yeah. got extended again because of the flood, right. and we could have get it done last. You're kind of making my point. So. Thank you. Great. So I am more than happy, and I know Tom would be more than happy that we kick this grant back the twenty-three thousand dollars because it's a drop in the bucket for what we have to do. Right. And if we put this bid out for for people to work, the people in the trades, the professionals to do the sidewalk, we get a hundred feet done. So I'm all for saying to the state that we can't spend this twenty-three thousand dollars on the sidewalk because we could definitely do more projects that are way more effective than that sidewalk. I'm for that. If you tell me to do that, I will gladly tell the state they can have their $23,000 back. I'm happy to do that if you want. Clearly didn't communicate very well my point because that is not what I asked or mentioned. Well, we can allocate so, the no, Let's the move on, please. I didn't say put, I didn't say throw the big grant back. I said start executing these things differently. When the, differently, yeah, right? But when when what the you're grant was, is, I agree some, with you. Well, then the grant was too small for the job. But we should have just still found a contractor and spent that money that year, 2020, 2020. Right. right. Yes, that. Fact, correct. Danny, correct. Yes. Danny, we tried. Okay. We did not get anybody to do it. Because yeah. when we were doing the sidewalks on the other side, Greens, Greensboro site board stopped and saw us doing it. Thought we were contractors. <laughs> Wanted to know if we could go to Greensboro afterwards to do there. Because they actually went out to bid and no one bidded on, on, on the side of sidewalks up there for replacement. No, but it is like, I think. I agree with you. Yeah. Absolutely. It's right. a good question is if it's worth the $22,000 or not. Right, is it worth, well, or more to the point, is it worth, is that how we want our road crew spending that, that time this summer well, working on that sidewalk? Because we have, because the benefit to us, right, like we're not actually getting that much subsidy. So we also have about $60,000 in grant and aid work. That's rebuilding our mm -hmm. roads that aren't up to code. Yeah. That we need that they extended from last year to this year. So we have two years of grant and aid work that we have to spend before September. So I'm more than happy. I have a meeting with them next Wednesday and I'm more than happy to have contractors do that work. You just got to let me know. We can, yeah. the, I think the thought in the, in the past has been, we get this, we get a grant and we stretch it as far as we can stretch it and get as much work that we can get done. But what I'm hearing from you is that we need to really prioritize these projects and these small grants. We can't be using up our guys on, on the work. Because I know right now for ditch work, we're still we're still trying to get caught up on the flood work before reshaping all of our ditches. Mm -hmm. Which like I told Opie, it's just that this grant and aid stuff is made for designated areas yeah. that are highlighted in red. So it doesn't help us out trying to repair the ditches that we need to get back. But that's what we're going to talk about. Right, that's what we're going to talk about on Wednesday. If we can use that money for the ditch work that we are doing now to help us fix and repair all the flood work and stuff still. Because we still got you know tons of ditching to do. But then again, or, we only got so much money for ditch stone right. where the grant aid wouldn't cover it because it's not considered a new project or it's not considered being in the red if it was in the green before. Like Opie said, now it's in the red, but it was green and that's the way it is on their map. It's, it's yeah. So it's just a practical question about, because I don't know much about the sidewalk, is it a hazard to anybody walking it right now? A major hazard? Like well, um, I mean, basically all of, a lot of our sidewalks in town need Rehab it. Sure. I mean, we got the entire north or uh, south south main sidewalk going all the way down to Magda. Yeah. That's in bad shape. And we got Wolf Street. That's in bad shape. We got yeah. this. Uh, I mean, West Church. The street. planning commission's done. But by the time you start doing this that. stuff, you're 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 going to have to bond for it, or else you're, you're going to have to start saving up a lot Hyder more money. Than sidewalk. But it's not at the east hard part of sidewalk level yet. Basically, it's <laughs> safe for somebody to walk on. Yes. Well, relatively. Yeah. Relatively. And the other side of the street is new. Right. So somebody yeah. doesn't have to walk in the street to avoid a hole or to avoid a crack. So it sounds like, God forbid we have another flood in July. 
but I prefer that we spend time on ditches than a sidewalk. It just seems like, so this used to happen in my field too, is you get a grant, you do everything you can to get every penny out of that grant, and sometimes it's just not worth it. Like, I don't know, I think it's a really good point, Danny, and I, I, I don't know if that's our number one. I think sidewalks are a priority. I don't know enough about that one to say if it's a priority, but it just seems like there's a lot more that you guys should need to be doing and spending time on. I agree, 100%. But it's, you know, it, it's what you guys want to do. Like, I am, I'm sick of living by the state standards. I'd rather do what the local community wants us to do. And I don't get a lot of phone calls saying you need to repair the sidewalks on Church Street. Right? So maybe it's not the highest priority for this summer. So, well, if you don't use it, does it, it have to be Church Street? You know, so. The, the grant was written for yeah, ADA accessible sidewalks on, on both sides of Church Street. Mm -hmm. Here. And one side has been done, brought so, up to code, right. and that was the worst side. So the entrance to this place could use a little love. It, that's the plan, yeah. Could so use the 23 I, to use a 23 to hire get, somebody to clean up. To at this. least get handicap access to this end of the street to start with. And not, I don't know, that's what I would like the cross hire a contractor. Yeah, and, and fix what we can for the money we have at the beginning of the street to, as far as it goes. Okay. That's that not sending it back. And, Got it. And, and just seeing what we can get. I mean, okay. there's there's people beyond. I mean, I'm seeing concrete being poured every day all over the state. So right. there's big contractors that will get here at some point. Ireland or you know, there's somebody that'll do it. I guarantee you. We will put it out on the street. Well, that's my hope that somebody will do it. But yeah, I, that if that happens. I mean, there's people that do it every day that yeah, have to have, they have to have curb. I mean, once you pour it, it's over. You got to move on to the next one. I did have a I did have a conversation with a couple last two years ago, and they said it's not big enough for us to even look at. Well, and then, um, I guess I'll have to do it. I'll take twenty five grand, do three feet. Okay, I'll put it in a bed. We'll put it out of bed. So lineal feet, that. three lineal feet. I would say try okay. to spend the money at least if we're not. Try to spend the money, but not have our town guys do it. Mm -hmm. Fair. Yeah, I mean, I think. Uh, Got that. Uh, Whatever. We're good. Whatever. With it. We're good with it. Look, we've done so much for this town and stuff like that that you guys have asked us to do it time and time yeah. again. Stuff that isn't involved with the town, with the town roads or anything else yeah. like that. This is the way the town has always been because right. it's small. Yeah. And the stretch of money, like we said, we try to do as much work as we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but the flood last year really set us back. Right. But still, I mean, we've got gravel coming up. We're going to start hauling all sand back. You know, we've still got a boatload of ditch work to do. I'm trying to get back. Yeah. But, you know, we've got paving. Of course, we'll one week to cut and I'll be back on that right now. But Hutchins said they'll hold their bid price from what from last year. So even for the new areas that we want to pay, they'll still so we don't have to go back at the bid on that. So I mean, it sounds like there's enough other well, you just rattle off a whole bunch of projects that need attention. Well, it's it's the way it is every every year. Here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's nothing new to us. Yeah, you just have to prioritize. You, you know, you're just trying to pick and choose your days, and, yeah. and like like I said, you just two two guys ripping up the side sidewalks, and that's it. And then usually for pouring them, they're just you know four of us doing it first thing in the morning, and then two two of us stay stay there until you, you know we can you know shape it up and stuff like that and go on. So sounds like we're trying to put it up to bed, and if we can't, I think I push this back. I want to push it back on you and say just. Manage it. Do what you think is the best thing to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because I think, I think, I, I don't know. What I'm hearing is that people want to, the board wants to contract out where it makes sense to contract out. We want Tommy's crew to have the ability to focus on the roads and, and do their priority items. <clears throat> but I don't really know the schedules and if, if something else makes sense, if there's, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I think you're closer to it. What I'll do is I will get a hold of some companies that do sidewalks. I will get a price, a current price per cubic yard on foreign sidewalks. 
see how far we can go, and that's how far we'll go. And is that is that still going to tie up our road crew doing the site? They still the have to work? do the site work. They still have to do the the, the demo. Because because concrete guys don't do that. Like that's just the way it rolls. Or well, if we had them do. I mean, it's just more money. Then we'd have to pay right. them to do that. There's the no doubt that the 24000 isn't going to go very far, no matter I how you spend that. it. I'm well aware it's not going to go very far. Yeah. I mean, it's like on the order of it. It's more like a change order than a project. Right. Okay. I'll take care of it, give you guys some updates. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, I think I pissed off enough people. You can it. <laughs> Just me. Let's see if we can piss them all off. <laughs> well, we're not going to make everybody happy. No, it just waves down the As we make some people happy sometimes. All right. Yeah. Next is Hardwick Police Department report given by Mike Henry. He just had to step yeah, out because he got paged. Yeah, no, so. so we're going to skip over Mike for now and move to Hardwick Elect Department. We have Scott Johnstone here who has been gracious enough to join sure Hardwick it's... Electric for an interim period. You're really from Morrisville Water and Light. That's right. Scott Johnstone, yeah, my day job really is Morrisville Water and Light, but uh, for, that, for the next three months, I'm going to do double duty because um, that's what neighbors do for each other and you guys are in a pinch so we're glad to help out and I'm glad to be here and I'm mostly glad to report to you that we've got a really great team. Um, we've got issues to deal with and I'll talk to you a little bit about that here um, but the people that are there care deeply about this community and the work that we do. We need a few more linemen. If you know any electrical linemen, send them our way because we are really, really hurting. Um, Morrisville, Stowe, and Orleans are all helping us keep the lights on at night. We're all taking turns on doing shifts. So uh, the whole you know the whole community of municipals is helping out. Um, which is, again, we all do that for each other. So happy to do that. Um, but the team is really uh, very strong. Um, what I'd say to you is uh, in terms of having a foot planted in today and in a minute I'll talk about tomorrow, is it's not lost on me in the short time I've been uh, working with Hardwick here. Uh, that we've, we've taken that some public hits. And we've got to really work hard on public trust issues. Um, and I think we've got the team to do it. Um, you know, I'm not sure we've even found all of those issues yet. Um, I'm actually still trying to unearth whatever's left um, for those sorts of issues that might be hanging out there. But the commission's really focused on that. Um, we get that there, you know, we've taken some policy positions over time that are not the most customer friendly. Little things like if you need a bigger transformer, you know, do you pay for the whole new transformer or do you pay for the marginal difference, right? Um, there's little things, you, know, you can say, well, the state has rules about this. They do. And they can either be portrayed as, as black and white or the truth is they're gray and there's room to move. And there's a whole panoply of ways that uh, utilities across Vermont do these things. So we're, the commission's already um, grinding through these things. They're not easy to change. Um, so it'll take a little time. Uh, we're, uh, our our uh, office staff is going to start putting some public messaging out to the public. We've never had done Facebook or anything else, but anyway, we just got to get connected to the community. All of the staff are connected to this community. Hardwick Electric needs to get reconnected to this community. Um, and that's really, in terms of the work we're doing today, there's a million things we're doing with Make Ready Work for Fiber and you know, trying to get the, the hydro dam back up and running, which I think it will be in two or three months, other FEMA stuff. There's a lot going on. But that's really the focal right now, hiring a GM, hiring uh, line workers, and getting reconnected, finding out the balance of these customer issues and starting to turn a corner. Um, at the same time, there is no time to wait to start uh, thinking about what's coming at you like a freight train in the future, because it's coming at every utility in Vermont, whether you're as big as GMP or as small as Hardwick Electric in Morrisville. And that is that everything that you think you've ever known about a utility is going to change in the next 10 years. You know, the legislature passed the Renewable Energy Standard Bill. We gotta be 100% by 2035. That seems like a long time. In utility speak, that is tomorrow. Like tomorrow. Now, some of you probably think that's a great idea. Some of you probably think that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard. It doesn't matter. The freight train's coming either way. So from my, I, I approach these issues that come from Montpelier as, you know, it's have whatever opinion you want. We gotta get ready, right? Um, I actually think that's the less important of the bills that are coming at us. The big one will likely come next year if the legislature does as expected and passes the clean heat standard. 
Um, I don't, we have not done those numbers at Hardwick Electric yet, but I can tell you in Morrisville I've done those numbers, and we, we peak at about eight and a half megawatts right now. At, if we really electrify everything, we will peak at about 22 megawatts, which means every transformer is too small, every wire is too small, the substations have to be updated, you have got to add battery storage on your system because all you have is variable renewables. Um, and I suspect, while you have, you have a smaller peak than us, I think it's around six, so maybe you're going to be 14 or 15. You're going to have the same effect, right? Um, so there's all of this kind of getting ready. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean rates will be terribly higher because we're going to sell, you know, 150% more electricity to help pay for it, right? But we got to actually do all that math. Like, I can't tell you if it'll cost more or less. For customers today, I can tell you that in Morrisville, but I can't tell you that here. So the commission is starting down all these paths. Really, an interim shouldn't start this, but like we're supposed to submit an integrated resource plan, which is a 30-year look at what we have to do here in October. <laughs> now, we'll probably be able to get an extension to that because you have an interim, um, but the commission has got to like walk through the steps of understanding what all this stuff even is. Like I just gave you the, the Cliff Notes version of the Cliff Notes version of stuff that's coming, right? Uh, for tonight, because I know you're behind schedule and you got a lot on your plate. Um, but that's gonna really, uh, both, both turning the corner with the customer um, history and then getting ready for the future. The rest of it's just management. Like, you know, hiring people, you know, you know, taking care of people, all of that stuff, like, that's just management. Like, hard work will be just fine. So what I would tell you is just, and then I'll answer your questions is, there's no doubt in my mind based on the fact you've got a great solid system and you've got a good team, like your be the best days are in front of this department, not behind it. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't know if you like getting real technical or if this stuff is okay for you, first time here, so. Good to know. Well, Scott, you're wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Well, thank you. Um, are you helping with the general manager recruitment process or? Yeah, I'm supporting the commission. I mean, they'll make the hire. Uh, I'm helping pre-screen. Yeah. We have, last time I heard, we have eight applicants so far. So it's on the street. You know anybody good, drive them to our website. Um, there's a, there's a uh, position description there. You'll likely be happy to know the position description, which I had no hand in at all, um, was entirely by the commission, is focused on cooperation, community building, community customers. That is the focus that they're hiring for. So, you did say you do know the number in Morrisville for the results of the pre heat standard, and I'm guessing, my guess would be that it is going to, the rates will go up? The rates will go up, but they may not go up more, they'll probably go up about proportionally the same as if, if we kept the current system. Right. Um, electric rates are going to go up, right? Yes. Um, but yeah. you know, we've been 20 years, I presume Hardwick's the same, we sell basically the same amount of product as we did 20 years ago because of net metering and efficiency of Vermont. Um, those of you that are business people know, if you don't increase your sales, you don't have a very viable business without raising rates. Right. And then can the customers afford it? Um, you know, so it's a, the current path is a really tough path, right? Um, and so there's a piece of electrification that's like, hell yeah, we're finally gonna sell more, except we gotta like, even if we do everything right, we, we, people do net metering and people do energy efficiency, even if we do that, we're going to more than double our peak. Right. And, and we're also going to have to double our infrastructure. Absolutely. So that capital cost is going to be that all going right. on. And that's why you got to run the math. Like, I don't know your yeah. system well enough. Right. Um, Every system like actually would be different because of what exists. And what but you also have other great things going on that are going to have you do some of that. And again, you're going to get more sales to pay for it. But and I know it's a bit of a delicate subject. But, you know, the, the work going on down at the Yellow Barn and the gray building next to it, you know, there's other development that's being considered out there right now. That that end of town, we're probably going to have to upgrade that. That was for five years out. I told the commission we probably got to start the engineering on that in 25, so we can do it in 26. That's good news. Like you're having growth Grow. in town. Right? Right. I presume every one of you likes that idea. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, and that's the sort of stuff like we got to embrace that, not see that as a problem, right? And I, you know, that will just take a little time to kind of rework the culture of the organization and. And again, we got the right people that are ready to embrace it. That sounds great because that's where the focus, I mean, there's damage control needs to be done there. Yep. I've heard a lot about it. I haven't tried <laughs> to unearth it. It's right. No, no, but I, I mean, that's an important thing to a small local utility Absolutely. and having that, that relationship that you want to you wanna, you wanna keep it in town. 
Uh, could you, uh, this is a little bit down the weeds, but yeah. could you speak a little, give a little bit more of an overview about the Wolka Hydro plant and where that's at? Yeah, the Wolka Hydro, I was there a couple days ago with FEMA. Um, the, um, all of the equipment, the med, you know, we, all of the electronics flooded, I mean, the whole thing flooded, you know that, but I'll go through piece by piece. Uh, FEMA allowed us to do what's called mitigation, lift all the electronics 10 feet in the air, so if the whole building went under again, at least the electronics would. Um, so that's done. Um, the the generation uh, it's generator itself, the turbine, uh, all the pieces just came back. They're sitting on the floor. Um, so they'll be being installed in the next couple of weeks. And then the generator will be ready. Um, what uh, came to light, and I don't know how it didn't get started earlier. I can't remake history. Um, but all of a sudden, like the first day I was here, everyone said, I think we probably have to dredge out in front of the pen stock to be able to run this thing. And some, for some reason, that wasn't on the list. So that's why I took FEMA down there. We now have an approved project with FEMA, but now I gotta go through the same thing you're talking about, getting a whole bunch of bids. I can't just go pick somebody, you're not allowed to do that. So we gotta go through that. Fortunately, we just finished the exact same project in Morrisville. So I know all the contractors, I already have a contract template. I already did the project. We just finished it two weeks ago. So hopefully we can just take that whole process, flip it really quick. Um, and get that done. I'm hoping in two to three months that thing can be running. Um, the generator will certainly be ready within three or four weeks. But the question is how quickly can we flip um, the dredging? But we also got to get Army Corps permits, Army Corps, State of Vermont yeah. permits, State Historic Preservation permits. Again, I got them all in Morseville, so I know how to do it. Um, and they know, basically, I'm proposing exactly the same project, so they shouldn't have to review it much. Okay. So hopefully that's going to be a benefit for you that the learning we did in Morrisville will just travel right up the road. Sounds like a lot of the learning you've done in Morrisville has traveled up the road. <laughs> we're working on it. We appreciate it. Yeah, we're up the river. <laughs> Good. Well, I, I should be here for at least two more months, maybe three, depending on when the new person starts. And, uh, uh, you know, but it's really, it's one of those things that's good both ways, right? So, you know, so right now we're giving you a hand. You've given us a hand in, in the past. Right now you don't have any linemen. And we do so we can help you. You know, it was only three years ago that we had one lineman, and you and others helped us. So, um, so th again, this is this is the way that these small communities can make it is if we help each other. So that's all that's going on here. Nothing more than that. Hey. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Uh, Mike Henry, we skipped our order yeah, a little I'll bit. I'll make mine real quick. Yeah. Because uh, uh, we got uh, number three to work on too. That's part of mine. Uh, no, the only thing I got is that Jason Slusinger uh, is resigning. Um, Jason came on as a part-time temporary for us. Um, unfortunately, you know, we were trying, hoping that he would stay, but uh, he just he just butted heads with the state's attorney and just was going to stick around. So, for that reason. State's attorney again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, other than that, we're... We've identified the problem, there's no doubt. We right. just got to find a solution. Uh, so other than that, we're trying to figure out right now. We've got uh, two people in the part-time academy. Uh, we're trying to get them lined up for full-time academy, which starts in August. Um, you know, we'll at least get one in the academy for the full-time. Great. Uh, that's the plan right now. Um, same boat as him. We're trying to uh, figure out how we can get people vacation time this summer, uh, being short-staffed as we are. Um, just trying to make it work, that's it. Good, thank you for making things work. Yeah. Questions for Mike? All right, I'm gonna move us along. Item one, select board to consider approving a liquor license. I make the motion that we approve. <laughs> what? No, not yet. Tanya oh, wants yeah. to speak. Because well, one, I made a mistake, they're not all renewals. Oh, okay. There's a new one, the Cabot Foods for a second class. And then there's also, usually I don't throw in the permits because they're like a day or two, but this one just came in this week. And it's the Caledonia Spirits. They do samplings and sell unopened bottles at the farmer's market and they put in for a permit for the entire summer. And that's an outside consumption permit or is that no, It's not? a special events permit. Special events. Yep. Got it, Caledonia Spirits. I don't think yep. we should let them back in there. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also put on, normally I don't present them to you until they pay their, their yeah. fee. But there's two of them on here who have sent their applications in but haven't paid the fee. So I put them on just because 
when they send their fees in, that way they don't have to wait till the third Thursday in July because their licenses expire at the end of June. So that way they come in the next 10 days to have already reviewed and approved and then I can just go online the portal and approve them then. Great. Now Danny, back to you. Make a motion that we approve a first class license for RBI Hybrid LLC doing business as Positive Pi and a second class, new second class license for Cabot Foods Limited doing business as Cabot Greenway, Yellow Barn, a second class license for DG Retail LLC doing business as Dollar General. Third class license for RBI Hardwick LLC doing business as positive pie. Outside consumption permit for RBI Hardwick LLC doing business as positive pie. And a special events permit for Caledonia Spirits Inc. We have a second. Second. Any questions for Tanya? Or we, she's already checked that all of the above, yeah. the renewals have no impression. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, next item two is select board to receive updated and amended unified development bylaws from zoning administrator on behalf of the planning commission, although perhaps Dave Gross on behalf of the planning commission. Um, and we have to set a public hearing date for uh, hopefully for September. Motion to uh, approve the amended and updated unified development bylaws. No, we're not approving. We're just uh, I think we're just receiving. receiving. You're oh. setting the public hearing. Setting the public hearing date. Let's do it. You want to set the public hearing date? That's what you want to do. I want to move on. Yep. It's for September fifth. September fifth. Sure. Good day. What day is the? Good day for you. What is, good day for me. Is that? That's looking Thursday, very Thursday. far ahead. Is it Thursday? Okay, third Thursday. Why is it so far ahead there? First. September? Oh, we're jumping ahead. September, September 5th is the, the first, first, first Thursday. Thursday. Okay, good. First Thursday so in September. So we're going to do it at what? 5.30? She requested more than half an hour. Five? She said at least an hour, yeah. For what? Is she going to read up to us? Public comment. For Christian, yeah. We're anticipating public comment this time around. <laughs> I've been to dozens of hearings. I've never seen more than two seconds of public comment. Well, I don't know why we need an hour. But the planning commission fine. had ours, and we did have Christians some people. Christian's versus my, com my desire, because she's all about it. Sherry's saying they had, they did have people come to the planning commission. So. Good. Sure. That's fine. Yeah. I just all right. I hope so. So, wait, so we're doing 5 p.m. on the 5th? 5 on the 5th. 5 p.m. on the 5th. Good luck. Yeah, good luck, Tommy. Um, I need one of those. You know you don't. Yeah. You had one. You gave it up. You think it's to get a jail free card? It's just going from one to another. I'd like to um, hear from the planning commission. Yeah. If Simple. Is it okay? About the development or the modernization stuff. Read. You get one of these? <laughs> All right, so hang on. Did you make a motion? Uh, sort of. I made a motion that was not accepted. <laughs> <laughs> it was rejected. <laughs> we never finished it. So. Uh, well, I think it's fine to make the motion and get that on the table. Okay. And then we'll have a little a motion to receive. I don't know as we need a motion to receive these, do we? No, a motion to set And the, a motion to set the uh, <laughs> meeting for the 5th of September at 5 p.m. There we go. That's a good motion. So at okay. least. 55 minutes of interactive discussion yes. on these. Second. 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 Thank you. So, uh, Dave, you want to say? Sure. Okay. Um, just for you and also perhaps the audience a little bit to give the information. Um, as you know, the Planning Commission uh, writes, researches and writes the town plan and submits it to you. And then um, the bylaws are uh, examined again to make sure they conform to the new town plan so it's an iterative process so we're constantly going back let alone oftentimes the state says these are the new rules which we have to update our bylaws reflect that yeah. so the last time the unified uh, development bylaws were updated is 2017 and that led to some time for us to look at our town plan 
which we restructured and that went to, uh, you approved in uh, 2019. And that's our present town plan with select modifications. Um, one of the things we looked at with the town plan was once again the issue of housing, the missing middle, what we could do um, to try to look at the bylaws to address that. And, and that was just on our own. And uh, in August of 22, that was the update of the um, bylaws for accessory dwelling units, where we changed the uh, specifications and who could be owner and whatnot on it to address it. As we that continued looking at um, um, the issue of housing, we did receive a Vermont housing opportunity, uh, Vermont bylaw modernization grant in 2023, which allowed us to hire a consultant, um, which is uh, excellent. We um, ended up go, um, going with uh, Heather Carrington, uh, CCDS. And so for the past year, she's guided us through the process of going through our entire um, bylaws to try to identify obstacles um, to either um, developing housing or things that slowed the process down. Um, meanwhile, uh, the state passed the Vermont Housing Opportunities Made for Everyone, or HOME Act, in June of 23, at which point that was uh, um, some very specific regulations, some of which we were looking at, but the state basically kind of took it out of our hands and said, you will do that. And those, uh, many of those became implemented in July, and the entire act will be implemented by December 1st of this year, 24. So since we're already working with Heather, we folded those in, looked at those, and um, put those in. The HOME Act only applied to households or businesses that were served by both sewer and water in the town. Um, so it didn't apply to East Harbor, which was only water. Um, so basically it was roughly, if you want to think of the, the downtown and the uh, surrounding areas uh, of Hardwick Village. Um, so we um, implemented those rules. We were also went through the bylaws um, and looked and made sure that they were consistent outside of the area. Um, for instance, um, the requirement for parking. Um, uh, the state says um, in, in home act areas, sewer and water, it's one um, um, parking space per unit maximum. You can't say one and a half or something like that. We looked at the other um, requirements in the other zoning districts and we said, well, that makes sense if we're doing it there, we should do it everywhere. So what we did was look in the other zoning districts for the bylaw regulations that um, basically, and made sure they made sense, that there was no reason um, they differed from um, a more encouraging um, uh, uh, process. And so it's like uh, duplexes um, uh, are allowed wherever a regular single family home is owned. And we said, that makes sense. Um, so that's an example as you go through. And so um, that, so that's one of the attempts to improve housing, and this is part, primarily the missing middle, by removing obstacles uh, 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 by dimension requirements, lot size, units, um, density, and also um, hopefully speeding up the process what was permitted versus what would have to go to DRB kind of examples. Um, then uh, the other thing we needed to do since rather than have you have many updates was the uh, flood resiliency. Um, because of the uh, 23 flooding, that was uh, um, a lot of changes and uh, things that needed to be done. So we made updates to our flood overlay. And that's why that's in the list, too. One um, final thing we um, were uh, uh, doing was you'll notice that a series of um, uh, parcels were in one district and we're moving them into another. 
and that is because um, they are being served by water and sewer, but they were outside of the um, downtown. Um, and so we just moved them in so that basically all of it matched with the urban compact Hardwick 2015 definition. And so therefore we could refer to all those uh, Home Act requirements, which are sewer and water, by referencing our um, urban compact 2015 map. And we wouldn't have to say, and these seven additional ones in this other district, if that makes sense. Okay, so it's more of a, a, a bookkeeping um, type of a thing. Nothing really changes for the homeowners. Oh, yeah, it does. <laughs> I can now put 35 apartments on my property. Well, no, I'm talking about moving these just from one district to another, moving the boundary of the district. Yeah. Okay. My yeah. property is one of the ones that got changed. So. Okay. Now I can build closer. Okay. Well, yeah, this is saying we different. don't we don't yeah, have a complaint from any different. personal owners on this. All right. Um, no, I don't care. Uh, so, um, <laughs> and uh, that is the quick, real fast nutshell of uh, a little over a year's work. <coughs> and Heather was excellent. Could have done it without her. And yeah, the planning commission. Very I got a great system. team. I just sit around and, you know, let them do stuff. And then Kristen, you know, looks at me if I try to get out of line. So, you know, between those guys, I think they got a good product. And if you have any questions on this before uh, the hearing or something, um, Kristen's a perfect ref person to bring in who can speak in more depth at it. Great. Thank you very much for the overview. Good. Questions? Uh, Pretty. You good, Opie? Mm -hmm. oh, okay, just checking. I noticed you were listening pretty definitely there. All right, so we got a. Uh, did it once, did it right. It's good. Yeah. So um, we have a motion on the table to do the uh, set the hearing date for the five five o'clock on September fifth. Five on five. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Thank there, you. Tim. 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 When Tim get here? Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Uh, uh, next up, uh, select board to review proposed traffic ordinance changes and consider adopting the changes. Um, so, there's so this is just on the parking issue. Yeah. Last year we changed the speed yeah. issue. So the only thing that's changed this time is the uh, parking. Yeah, but you, there's a there's a lot of uh, red line. There's a lot of small changes through that. Yes, there are. Hopefully, everybody read through it. No, hopefully, everybody I read through it. I can't say that I always knew where like 90 feet was and 135 feet was, but I just trust that you got it right. I hope I got it right. I got my little tape measure out and measured everything. And, and east and west sometimes they're a little mm -hmm. fuzzy for me. But. For the sake of the public, should we just have my talk to the main main points? Main points are just uh, well. Some of the main points are, you know, everything downtown has shifted. Uh, so parking spaces have shifted. They were they were a lot more before. They're they're less. Those are two-hour uh, parking. Uh, I got a little input to Sherry on on this. Uh, I think one of the big changes is on Depot Street. We made just right down here. Made a small change, saying overnight parking there, mm -hmm. uh, just to alleviate some of the problems we have there. Parking is on uh, currently. Uh, there's no parking on the, uh, the east side of Depot Street, uh, but for large events, um, there's parking on the other side. Uh, so those are the main changes. Uh, to some of the other. So it looked to me like a lot of the changes were just aligning the ordinance with what's painted on the, right. on the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, no parking in front of uh, the from, intersection. Yeah, the intersection, and there were some road things that were along in there yeah. as well, so those have been corrected. Yeah, so then, so we approve this or not or whatever, then 30 days, there's 30 days for 
uh, the public to respond to it before any signs go up or whatever. Yeah. That's how it works. Yeah. Are you doing? You have somebody that oh, wants to talk about I that. I have additional for this. Oh, OK. Nice. Great. Yeah. 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 Can I you? didn't recognize you. All right. <laughs> State your name, please. Uh, I'm Doug Runny. I'm here on uh, behalf of the Caledonia All Train Travelers ATV Club. Mm -hmm. Um, we recently just received uh, landowner permission from the owner of the Wampanoag camp to open up a lot of trail system up there, but we have no way to get there. So I'm hoping that we can get approved a few roads to get us from our trailhead up to the camp. Um, we're looking to open up uh, Route 14, which could be kind of iffy because I don't know if that's under town or if that's going to be state. Um, on that end of things, up until West Hill. Uh, open up West Hill, Bunker Hill, Wampanoke, and Tucker Brook to allow us to get into camp from that side. And then on the other side of town with the uh, loss of trail from behind Danny's and a, uh, a joint landowner, um, we're hoping to open up all of uh, Mattville to Scott Road uh, and then Glenside down to Route 15 so that our riders can access uh, hay service station as additional food and gas. Um, and then also carry road um, from Route 14 all the way to Mackville because we only have a section of that road right now open to the trail. So if we could open up all of those, that would be excellent. Doug, that's a lot of roads. Lot. It is. Yeah. Do, do we have a map? Have a map? Yeah. I don't have a written map. I do have it all written down okay. road for road that I can okay. give everybody. So what we've done in the past, because we had we had a similar request, was that somebody came, I think it, I, was it Malcolm? Anyway, somebody came and there was a map and it basically showed what is existing and where it ends and then mm -hmm. what you need it to go to. And so then during that request, we approved coming to the diner Right? Mm -hmm. that, 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 but it was super helpful to basically see visually how that worked, mm -hmm. I thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is not part of the traffic ordinance. This is not part of the traffic. The no, this should be an agenda item. Okay. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a separate ATV ordinance. Yep. Um, so we can open that up. So we can open that up later for this. Okay. This is specifically dealing with just the parking. Well, the yeah. traffic ordinance has a subsection of yes. parking. Yeah. yeah, a subsection. That's the subsection yeah. we're working on right now. Yeah. Uh, the ATV is within there. So. It is within in the, the traffic ordinance. Yes. Oh, it is? Yeah. Are you sure? No, it's no, a standalone. It's a standalone. Stand yeah. Okay. For sure. There were a couple of other small things that we were hoping to change within the ATV ordinance. Nothing crazy, but we were hoping to change the speed limits to maintain speed limits within the road so nobody's impeding on the roads that are already open. Yeah, that's what it should be. Um, we also want to uh, Wait, lengthen the curfew. I don't think I understood that first bit about speed limits. So, for example, from the on the section of Route 14 from Cary Road more, to yeah. the center of town where we have open, part of that is a 40. It's currently for ATVs 25, but that means we'll be impeding traffic by being yeah, too can't slow. Do that. We can't no. do that. that just, that's that all the order that needs to be changed. Yeah. Yeah. The speed of it has to be the same as the, as the, as the current That's roads. just left over from the days when we were right. in day one, literally. And then we want to um, lengthen the curfew. So instead of, I think the current curfew is 11 to 6 p.m. to a.m., uh, we're looking to actually change that to 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. just to help alleviate some of the road traffic during the off night hours. And then we also wanted to add um, a follow-up statement basically stating that if there's an issue with ATV traffic on the roads, that the club is included so that we can help with public outreach and that sort of thing to help alleviate any future issues. All right. <coughs> yeah, so it sounds like it's great for something to consider. We should probably, I mean, it sounds like Kaylee at least would appreciate a map. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have to look at our ordinance. Um, so 
can make it regenerate. Make it regenerate item next time or the time after, whenever it is. So I guess it's a good start. Yeah, yeah. it's a great start. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. Doug. Uh, a nice stand record. It is a standalone document from the APU. Yeah. So back to the um, traffic ordinance, which includes parking. Did, did, did everybody get a chance to review it? Are people comfortable adopting it? Do you want to wait? Do you want to change it? I, I'm fine with it. I wish we did an enforcement component with it. There is. Well, there is, but as long as it gets done. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, the enforcement has happened in a lot of situations, yep. especially, you know, where the trucks have been having problems. No, I, I heard, I've heard you guys have sought to support those. So that's uh, all, I'm good with it. It's just, yeah. let's, let's, I also heard that people are willing to pay a $10 parking ticket just to park in front of Well, well we, so well, that's well, another yeah, thing. So <laughs> that, the, fee the, fee the fee has changed as well. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to, you know, a $10 parking ticket for dinner is not, that's a pretty good parking price, to be honest. <laughs> what I, can tell you where I, I can tell you what I'm going to We bumped them up to $500. Yeah, no, but you know, that's... <laughs> no, don't quote me on that. Yeah. No, most of yeah. the Oh my gosh, I guess she was here. This is going to be terrible. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're giving her a lot. We're, we're just kidding. kidding. Yeah. What are, what are the, the changing fees? 25? 25. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's, that's fine. more for handicap. Yeah, it's more for handicap. Just yeah. everything went up. Uh, nope, I'm good. Those, yeah. if, those fee changes looked appropriate to me. I agree with Danny there. Yeah, I mean, 25 is ten dollars. It's not a deterrent. That fee is not good enough for a twenty-five dollar parking ticket. It, it's ten dollars, absolutely. I would have missed this. But what's, what happens if you don't pay? Uh, so no. No. once there are, uh, you know, three three assessed, the vehicle can be towed. Yeah. So. There you go. <laughs> or we can go through the, we don't have a boot, so yeah. we're going to opt for the towing. You take the yeah. car and tow the operator. <laughs> <laughs> He's joking. No, can cause a stir in front of a boot, a boot on a vehicle. A boot, yeah, that would be crazy. Yeah. That's Might be worth getting any boots. All right. I could, I could go uh, in the April 1st edition. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. All right, okay. so we're going to vote on making this happen right now? Yep, I can assume that we <clears throat> accept the... Uh, that we accept the proposed changes to the traffic ordinance and adopt those changes as written. I second that, okay. for sure. Any more discussion on the, those changes or the boo? The boo? Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking to those. <laughs> all right, all in favor of approving the updated traffic ordinance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you for all your yes, work on that. Yes, thank you for all your yeah. work. You, it was all your work on that, too. That's right. Thank you. I did a little well, bit of work well, just saying. She consulted. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just Thank you, to, Sherry. I and asked just Mike to, for as help. a reminder, the, import, the importance of that is that we need that ordinance to back up any time you're trying to ticket somebody for where they're parked. The ordinance needs to agree with what's on the ground, right? Right. So, mm -hmm. right. Ideally. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. The way it works. So it's good to do. All right. Um, next, item four, select board to approve and sign the lease agreement from VTrans for the trailhead in East Hardwick. Um, we've got a picture in our packet of where that is. Can I make a motion to approve we do that? And just as a note um, that the VTrans is making leases available for this type of thing for a dollar a year or a dollar for five years? Um, I believe there's no cost. Uh, it said a dollar. Okay. I think it might need to be a dollar. Yeah. Just because they had to have something. Yeah. Something. Right. Relatively. Well, so it isn't something else. <laughs> right. Uh, it's above the table. A dollar above the table and a five below the table. Well, we can pay more. Yeah. I have some question. Yeah, do we? Sorry. We you had a motion, right? Danny had a motion. Danny had a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Okay. So my only question is in the Exhibit A map, they outline the red as being on the, what I would call the east side of the LVRT. Yeah. But then in exhibit A map, we show the brush hog space to the west side as well. But is that town owned currently? So are we not leasing that? We're just leasing the right hand space? We're just, I believe 
that we're just leasing the right hand space and I believe that this exhibit A comes from the proposal that came yeah. from that group, you know, that consortium. Yeah. And so this right. they this is what they propose, but it's not what V Trans not is, what we're doing. is allowing. We're not dealing with oh, it's what we provided V Trans to draft the lease, okay. indicating that we want it on the south side of the Okay. But we're going to we're going to clear and that's a potential. Right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. That's just something we might do. Okay. So our lease, the yeah. lease that we're approving tonight, is in the first image. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Which is the more of the length of the east side. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. I just wanted to be clear on that, and then I just I don't know if this is a point for right now, but I, I don't think know it's, either. But I think it's worth mentioning that when the flood happened, there was Stevens Lane washed out completely yep. to bedrock, yep. and it washed out on that on the what's currently being proposed is the parking side of this project. Well, that's where it landed, right? That's, that's where, where the water landed. Yeah, the water all right landed across, right. on yeah. that side. So I think if we're so I think you, it's a does that mean project. there's a lot of gravel there that we can already? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah there's there is a lot of gravel there. Road. But I think it's something. The only thing that saved the LVRT was that concrete. Had. Basically, the water went like under that little concrete bump out, and that hole from the center line all the way down into that neighbor below was completely washed out. Yeah. So I'm just saying that I think it's a different point than tonight. Tonight we're just talking about the lease. Mm -hmm. I think we really need to think about that because we don't want to spend a lot of money on parking and infrastructure and not deal with those right. potential water issues. And those water issues happen from further up because of ditching right. and culverts. But I'm just saying, I just think it's like. There are Something water issues there that we need to address. Yeah, it's part of the project. Okay. Not right, not we need to think about. Okay, we got it. Kind of so, with with this lease, we can now potentially, if we have the funds to do so, we can now develop an engineering and architectural plan for that. Uh, and then go for funding. For that yeah. yeah. Oh, the only reason and we, we would deal with the stormwater. Right. As part of that. As part of that. Right, and that doesn't necessarily have. Ideally, we deal with the stormwater fifty feet up Correct. from the parking. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't really affect the lease at all. I just wanted to mention it that it's like. It affects the project though, yeah. so we would take that into consideration. Yeah. Yep. Good idea. Okay. All right. So uh, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any more discussion on the lease? All in favor of? Uh, do we have to? Yeah. Of approving the lease agreement with VTrans, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That's the lease agreement that needs to be signed by the whole select board. <coughs> there's two pages. Two, there's two parts. Uh, next is item five. Uh, select board to review and consider approving the sale of real estate policy. Um, this is the ordinance. Yeah. Wait. In here? Yeah, it's right behind yeah. I, okay, I so I I don't have a problem with most of it, but the note at the bottom, I I'm on, I'm not I'm not. Yeah, so I'm I, not comfortable with that really. I mean, I it may not be rehabilitated to start with. And second of all, someone buys it. I don't know if we're going. I mean, there's some places you're going to want to have input. We well, are going to want to have input, but I hate to put deed restrictions on what someone can do with the property. I, I guess if you guys want it, that's fine. That's just not the way I am. I have an example that I, I just want right. to share. Yeah. Either way. Good. Um, so the it would have been Sweet and Bird. Yeah. Sweet and Bird property down by Tops off of Charlevoix. Yeah. So I dug that um, that deed up. Yep. And there was a five year covenant on that deed that they would have to bring that property up to a value above a hundred thousand dollars. So that we could cook the town, the, the village uh, conveyed that parcel to Sweetenburg for free. For free. Yep. With the covenants that yep. they would have to bring that property up to a hundred thousand dollars in value, or else, and, and maintain it for five years. Yep. So that is an example of a deed restriction. Well, that's an example on a deed restriction on property that's gifted by the correct, town, but not we could just say it. Well, it's conveyed. But it's conveyed. It's conveyed. All right, that's fine. It's just yeah. I'm just giving you an example. If it makes people feel good to, to have control over something like that, then I'm 
It doesn't mean we have to do a deed restriction. Well, it I just know, gives but us the ability just, to. Yeah, but if someone asks us to convey a property for a dollar, you could do it anyway without having it in the policy. But the whole point of a policy is to make it fair. And so if you're, it's a bit vague, like who's getting a deed restriction, who's not. Yeah, it's so, that's good. So, so, which is fine, which is fine. It leaves us more leeway. Yeah. But right. But folks. it's also like, anyway, <sighs> the whole point is to not give, is to make it be consistent. And so it. Right. Now we're given the option, the, the, the ability to individuals to direct the sale of real estate in the direction they feel is more important than what maybe the general public does. Or for us to set parameters for some people and not for others. Right, but right. same, right. I think the same right. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we mean the same thing yeah. basically, yeah. 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 So to me though, I look at policies like this and think um, it's good because it kind of lays out a, a method, but I think it, I think it's good that we as a board don't box ourselves in to a point where we can't so, act appropriately in, in a circumstance. So my initial thought when I read that was no, and then I, my secondary thought was if you're going to do something like that, it needs to be not a no, it needs to be in the policy. Policies should have no. Policies are written to be policies. Um, and it needs it needs to be differently worded. That or maybe you know what I'm saying. Needs a little wordsmithing. Needs a little wordsmithing. I understand what our intent is, and I agree with that. We do want to be able to retain some sort of, <clears throat> but I think we have that. We have that broad, whether we want to sell it or not, authority. Period. Um, but if we can wordsmith that a little bit and not make it a no, but make it part of the policy. Um, I mean, does it make I sense to it. frame it in a way that's, because this, this is <coughs> underneath the authority section, to basically, and we don't have to words right now, but to, right. to basically say something like, we, as a select board, we grant the town manager to have the authority to suggest deed restrictions. So right, I don't even think like we need to call him out. I mean, or whoever, or we, or the board. Board. So right. let's go back to, we don't need to wordsmith it right now. Right. Yeah, okay. let's go back to that. Okay, <laughs> and um, I, I would also just, as a, general thing it seems to me the authority section a lot of the stuff is really the wording is geared towards rehabilitation which I think is not all, I mean that sometimes is the case but it's not always the case well that's not the right word right it, it's not the right word because someone so we need a little work yeah we're in the we're going the right very, direction very close yeah thank you Sherrod who's going to do happen. that work I don't know huh um well, you don't want it to be me. You than brought than it me. to us. So uh, you've done, you've I done, did, you've done, but you've done a part. The um, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. Kaylee and Danny were going to do this way back when, and then it never <laughs> happened. And so I brought it because I was tired of waiting. That's the truth. We um, just told you we could. Do uh, it. you have a unique way of. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, when you're tired of waiting, choose a different I make method. a motion now, Kaylee. Yeah, yeah I make a motion, <laughs> Kaylee, and I'll do it because Sherry is just being a I'm done man. doing it. <laughs> All right, so. If you bring something up, Sherry, take care of it, okay? Oh. We'll take care of it. Wait a minute. So no, no. I think ideally. Wait a minute. So, Jesus. So it sounds like we'll need to change from what I've heard from it, just to make sure I'm getting all the notes right is that there are issues with rehabilitation yeah. as a word and then with the notes section yeah as a note as a note yeah. is there anything else maybe in, in, well like is there any other big right the, know, the only other thing is I, I don't i don't have a problem with the select board having input into the mm -hmm. what's going to happen in the project it should just be a part that's of the way that is right yeah okay so you guys are going to work on that we are definitely going to work all right on that. sounds good <laughs> groovy Next. This will be really a team effort. Yeah. Uh, team effort. Oh, 73 frickin' pages when we get done. Next, <laughs> item seven. Select board to approve water and wastewater connection application for the yellow barn. Okay. I have, um, I've talked to Tanya. Oh, she just left. <laughs> uh, I was gonna, no, just kidding. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna do two permits, two applications. One for the yellow bar and one for the accelerator building. So I'm asking that the town, um, I'm asking that the select board waive the fee, the connection fee. 
for that project because it's our property, town owned, and <coughs> the project paid, and typically the connection fee pays for the meters, and the project paid for the meters, and that's what I'm asking. And that we approve. How much are the fees? Um, 500 for water and 1500 for wastewater. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not about waiting for fees. Okay. I'll tell you that right now. You guys are what you want to do, right? Okay. That building, that's, this whole project is not intended to be a. But well, we don't have to waive the fees if you don't want to, but if it's you, could, opinion, if you could approve the application so they could connect. So they're different. There's no. There's no big no, right. big loads here, right? No big loads, OP. Um, for the yellow barn, it's 65 people per day. That's what the permit. Toilet, no uh, manufacturing. There's anything. two kitchen sinks, two bathrooms, two toilets. Yeah. And it's uh, five employees and 60 patrons. That's the yeah. the wastewater permit. Um, the yell the accelerator is um, is. So it's a total of 375 gallons a day. But there's no, no there, there's no big volume. BOD or TSS, no, no. no. Um, so that's why I want to keep them separate. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the accelerator, accelerator building and it's 100 staff and 15 gallons per day. Um, at, so it's 3,000 gallons per day for the accelerator building. So we have two? So we have one right now because- Just the yellow one because the fit up isn't done, so we don't know exactly what um, water usage is there yet. Right. And we have this water usage, we can do both of them, but I wanna do the yellow barn because it's- Because they're getting ready, Cap is getting ready to yes. move in. And yeah, and we have to open up an account. So, but when, okay. But, so this Cabot is gonna have a connection. Yeah. In, in the barn. Correct. And then in the new building, we're gonna have Two, two inch water meters. And there, so there's a CAE one and there's a Jasper Hill one. So Correct. in total, we have three connections. Three large water meters, yep. Okay, just, and so, so we'll have three accounts. What we'd like us to approve tonight is the yellow barn, the Cabot yellow barn one. Yeah. Only? Yeah. Because the other, and we'll do the others later. When their fit up is designed, I know, CAE fit up is somewhat designed. designed. We have no idea what's going on on the other side, so. We need to hold off on that. Yep. But they're only they're, they're only permitted for 3,000 gallons a day, which is a lot. But this is a state gallon, state. And this is the state wastewater permit. Yep. Yep. Are you asking for the feeding wage, or is the project asking? The town, it's a it's a town building. So I'm asking for to waive the fee for the town. No, but it's not a town building. Well, it's a town home building. It is our building, but. Um, but but it has tenants who are the ones who are actually the paying the bills client for the water. For the water. So the would they break to own this building forever? Uh, I thought it was someone else owned it, just like the slant. They're right. paying the water rates. So so the, for the connection. The connection yeah, was paid for. So no, we were going to be. So the landlord. The project has paid for the connections. I understand that, but the fee for the. The town of Cargo couldn't pay the fee. Right, okay. So I'm asking to waive the fee for our property to connect to the sewer. So if Cabot is the tenant, why? Because it's on a building. So let me just back up and address your question about ownership. Yeah. Because I think that, so the, ta the way it's currently laid out is the, the town owns it. The town owns everything down there. We own the land, we own the buildings, but we have entered into a long-term lease with the Northeast Kingdom Development Corporation, which is a nonprofit that essentially just runs that <coughs> build, you know, building the it leases. and administ and then <coughs> leases it out to the tenants so that the town doesn't have to be involved in any of that. So the only interaction there for the town is the town to the NEKBC. So when this whole project's run into the ground in 20 years, yeah, the town has got a big pile of due. No, actually, we would have a $10 million dollar investment. Our <coughs> that would turn to yeah. housing. Mm -hmm. yeah. In 20 years, we'd be free and clear of that I guess property. We are real, I guess we, we don't. Are real we don't. Like 
right. free and clear. Right. Yeah. So we're, we're definitely landlords, which is not the way I envisioned. I thought it was going to be like the center for ag, but that ship's long sailed now. So we are landlords. We are. It so would I, be possible I, I would like to rewatch a lot of meetings where that landlord question was asked. Okay. But um, if you, it, there are options. There are restrictions, but there are also options going forward. But right now we're just looking at a. Well, I, I, Correct. I apologize because I didn't realize it was Correct. our building. So well, if it's our building and we're paying to have it hooked up, then we, don't have we may as well waive it. And the but mechanics of hooking it up are all it was it done. For the tenants, and in that case, I would have said that. No. But, so. but the tenants are the actual rate, pay. rate payers on our, on our water system. Yeah. So, so mm. CAB is going to pay for yeah. whatever they, they use. And but they're not paying for the infrastructure in the building. They're just leasing it. Correct. From Hardwick. They're leasing it from the NEKDC. So how much does NEKDC, where does their money come from? Who pays for their staff so, and um, their stuff? So, so unfortunately, NEKDC does not have paid staff. It has an all-volunteer board and relies heavily on NVDA for help for accounting grant writing. So NVDA is their staff? Yes. Which, yeah, there's not. We can go into a whole yeah, side yeah, discussion yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on how skinny that budget was and that's maybe the not the best way to build a project, but um, but we did we almost got it built. It's getting there. Get there. I'd like to make a motion to approve the water and wastewater connection application for the yellow barn and waive of the fees. And Second. Off, and authorize the town manager to sign the application. And authorize the town manager to sign the application. Second. And more. Then, also, do we have more discussion? I'd also like a signature from the select board member as an applicant, so I'm not the signature on the applicant and <laughs> the person signing the... Well, that should be Tim. He made the motion. Yeah. Okay. Just, um, just designate. Any more discussion? Where? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone. And we should probably talk sometime, Danny, about... The ins and outs, if you're interested. Think we have to. <laughs> no, it's really. Sale. Bring it up every time. I, 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 I adamant there about me not ever there. understanding the fact. I definitely misunderstood that we were landlords and we're going to be giving stuff away, which, you know, one of the big concerns about that whole project mm -hmm. was tax money, tax mm -hmm. revenue, what's going to, and the first thing we do, very first thing we do, is have to waive a fee mm -hmm. for infrastructure that we need to fund really, really badly. So that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. I mean, the very, this is exactly what the concern of many, many, many taxpayers in the town of Hardwick were. Is, and, and the very first thing we do is waive a fee. Okay. So when, so when the pilot is mm -hmm. $3, mm -hmm. it'll be $3, that's okay? So yeah, yeah there'll be a pilot, but it'll be $3. So it'll be good. And my taxes will go up because so that's the way I see it. I, so all that registered. However, if you want to have a discussion about yes. the ownership and the options going forward, I'd be happy to have that with you. I, you were very good at explaining stuff to me. I appreciate it. Well, <laughs> this stuff is complicated. I, I it might not be good at explaining it, but I will try. No, you do well. And you put a lot of time in this, and that's just... There, there is a, a misconception with the public as to the burden on the taxpayers for this project. Yes. Um, and I think that it would be move us to revisit the pilot payments that are scheduled to, for the town to receive from the Yellow Barn project, and they're they're um, a tiered pilot payment, and within the five-year period, um, it's probably five times more than we would receive if that property was taxed like it was before. If it hadn't been yeah. rehabilitated. If it hadn't been and rehabilitated. New building. Yeah. And, but, and then the... So we've, the, we've done pilots and we've done tax uh, whatever yep. when they don't have to pay full tax for the first... It ramps up. Yeah. Stabilization. Um, tax stabilization. Yeah. So I understand all that stuff. Um, but 
and there yeah, is there hasn't true. been any financial burden other than the economic development loan fund on the heart of municipal taxpayer. And that's not that and the loan fund loan is grant funded, 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 it's not taxpayer money. That will be paid for with interest. <laughs> yeah. Promise. Yeah. 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 It's coming. Yeah, it's coming. Checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. All right. But we should talk sometime about the ownership structure and ways. You know that, yeah, that, and honestly, Eric, I appreciate it, but that might want to be a public discussion so everyone knows, not just yeah. me. There was, be happy to do that. CAE you know. had a good presentation. Yeah, I that know that. Really good. They don't, you know, yeah, whatever. I, uh, yeah, not tonight, but because we're already, it's yeah. hot, but yeah. I'd be happy to do it here if you want. Uh, Next is uh, item eight, select board to approve uh, fiscal year 25 fuel bid recommendations for propane, heating oil, and road diesel. I did have questions, I don't know if other people do, but. Yep. Um, no. okay. So, it looked like you're recommending <laughs> Irving for uh, propane mm -hmm. and heating oil and, uh, where are you on? Can I I'm listening. And, uh, yeah, exactly. So that's so the Irving for propane and heating oil looks pretty clear, but for on-road diesel, uh, so it, it's a it's a choice between a higher fixed rate or a lower variable rate. Right. And, and it depends on. I, I did try to look up um, forecasts for <laughs> for diesel fuel. And the U.S. Department of Energy has stuff from 2023 on their website, <laughs> yeah. which I didn't find terribly helpful. So I looked at the, the five-year trend of diesel. The past five years, yeah. Kate, yeah, Casey and I were kind of looking at the, yeah, where the lower. price, you know, it's, it's been a gradual decline in on-road diesel pricing, the cost. Yeah. Um, so it's a gamble. If if we were to go with that, we could potentially save sixteen to $20,000. Or at with least variable. with the variable, if the price didn't it's rise like at least at above 11, the, above the, the 309, and what's the worst case scenario? Go it goes to like 350. Yeah. Okay. What's our, what are we budget for this year? Uh, you had to ask that. Uh, yeah. I think it's it was like 60,000 60, gallons, 75,000 dollars says budget for 25 need? budget for diesel. Yes, oh, yep, yeah, there is where. Red, in the red, yes. F diesel is seventy-five thousand. Just got okay. <coughs> So uh, so in general, I'm in favor of fixed prices when you're doing budgeting because I feel like it it just helps us be steady. But I'm very tempted to roll the dice on the variable rate on the fuel. I don't know what. Really interested to hear from others. Look, looking at the trend of, of the price of diesel, it's a gradual, you know, everything that goes down yeah. must come up, and who knows where the bottom of that is. You said diesel price, on road diesel prices have dropped. They haven't dropped, they've just been on a downward trend for the last five years. For what we for the town, what we pay. No, like the, we. I looked at the Northeast. Yeah, but oh, the I mean, I don't remember diesel being. That much cheaper now. It's still four dollars a gallon. Yeah, but wasn't it five for a while? It's no, no. It, you got just got to five. Yeah, but that's that's different than their the cost. I understand that's different than the cost. Yeah, but still, the trend should be the same. Yeah, the cost is still the same. So it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you but it's still a and you're talking, it may have dropped. It may be a cup, a cent or two. Correct. But it's it, not the trend. No. But the trend is downward. Right. Right. Or has I, I, Trust me. I'm a guy that burns <laughs> yeah. 75 gallons of fuel a day. Right. So I would love to see it so really go down. Are we willing to gamble on a year? That's the question. Of, of a variable. variable rate, which we can revisit next year. And I, I don't care. I mean, I'm willing to gamble because I don't believe it'll be, go up any more than it will go down. You know what I'm saying? I, if it's only moving it less can, than five cents in five years. Yeah. I'm comfortable with rolling the dice. It hasn't moved five dollars in five years. You know what I'm saying? It's only moved a few cents in five years. And it looks it's like been a quick, 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 quick. One click down every year is good. 
you know, but 20 clicks is bad no matter whether it's up or down because mm -hmm. it's going to... I'm willing to take that gamble. Sherry? Sure. Sure. I'm fine with taking the gamble. Sure. I mean, we have the money in the budget anyway, so it's we're not really... We're, we're hoping to save money. We're not right. we're not over budgeting. We're hoping to save money. Right, correct. Hey, we're plugging some numbers over here. I am. What are you thinking? <clears throat> oh, I I mean, yeah. We, wasn't it last year they wouldn't even give us fixed numbers? Right. So or no, that was two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. 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 So I think as much as we can go fixed is great, and and we've dealt with it before not having it be fixed. So, so, we'll so I think we can, we go with right the now variable. the Irving fits within our budget. And, I think and it can go quite a bit and still fit within our budget. Yeah. 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 And maybe right. I think we it's, it's not going to go up as much as our budget. Right. If it goes up 50 cents, it's I think we have to. I mean, we got $10,000, $11,000 yeah. okay. to play with, right? <laughs> that's a good bet. Because yep. if we go with a fix, it's yeah. Is it I, can I can motion that we approve the fuel bed for Irving for FY25. I second that. Oh, sorry. We're having a meeting over here, don't we? <laughs> we have a motion from Kaylee. Yep, I motioned to uh, approve the Irving fuel bed for FY25. For all three types of fuel. For all for heating oil, propane, and honor diesel. And Danny Hill Second. seconded. Yep. Any any more discussion? All in favor of uh, going with Irving on all of them, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item nine, select board to review and approve Hardwick Fire Department scuba. Is, can you say scuba or is no. it? It's not. S C B A. Yeah. It doesn't have a. No, nope. self-contained breathing apparatus. Scuba not not self underwater. Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Okay. It's completely different. So it's not a scuba or something, or no, it's just SCBA. Got it. I had questions about these too. Okay. I'm hoping. Are you on it? Um, questions. I can do the best I can. Yeah. Call. No, I'm paying. Well, he does have this memo in here. Yeah. I know. So, can I have a memo? Um, yes. Oh yeah. Okay. He wrote it. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Who wrote the memo? Amanda wrote the memo. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, uh -huh. I was like, this is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. That's like one finger at a time. That would take him a while. Oh, settle down. He's not even here to defend himself. <laughs> All right. So. I didn't understand, like, okay, so when I look at these three bids, I understand Tom is recommending either Reynolds or Bergeron. Those are the two higher bids, right? Yes. Yep. And the, I guess, one thing I didn't understand is that the lower bid from American Airlines. Well, it doesn't, that doesn't include maintenance, though, right? Didn't I read that somewhere? Correct. It doesn't include This also doesn't seem to include the tanks. Or the training. No, right. it, I don't think it's as... Apples for apples, right? For the other two, but that I was just checking. So I, I, that's what I picked up. The, so the, the, neither does Reynolds. That's an adder of five thousand two hundred twenty-six dollars for the, what? the tanks, the Cascade fill. Oh, no! I thought I thought the tanks were the UN six thousand psi storage because there's quantity four. Is that not tanks? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, but, but that's... But all, all this is in their bid. All those options are in their bid price. Yes. They're over there under options. So can we just say, so the, so the Reynolds bid is 46,237. Is that what I'm reading? 46,237. Yeah. That's Reynolds. And then the Bergeron is, is it the last one? 47. 45? 45. Or no, but that's what you're there, saying. There was two. There was forty thousand seven seventy eight and forty five thousand one hundred and twelve. Um, but the higher one is an enclosed frame, and the lower one is a open frame. And Tom said today that he would prefer an open frame, even though it's louder. He would still prefer yep. the open frame. And Reynolds, their bid is open frame as well. Okay. So we want to look at the two so open 40, frames. So 40, and while you're reading them out, there we also had a bid from American Airworks, which is not doesn't include some of the components, but that was for twenty three thousand three hundred sixty nine twenty cents. 
But they don't do the maintenance and they don't and do they don't have the tanks in there. Right. And they're not. They're in West Virginia. They don't do the tunnels at the side of West Virginia. Reynolds is, heaven is very, West very much local. It's so it's very Do we have a uh, yeah, what's our budget on this? This is an insurance. It's insurance from the flood. From the flood. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I wish Tony was here because this is really important that he doesn't say either. This is important for him as chief to say oh, this is one I want. green or red. Right. He said he's worked with both Reynolds and Bergeron. They've both been great. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, but but that's not, I mean, as a chief, we need him to just tell us a choice of which one he prefers. I think that yeah. would help me a lot because yeah. from what we're, what I'm seeing is they're both very compatible, so I'm just going to have to go with the lowest one. I mean, I'm hearing that he want, that he's okay with either of them. Well, that's true too. But so we just have to take him at his word, otherwise he would have been here. Well, well, he had a fire call. Yeah, he probably thought um, he was going to be here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but I, I agree what you're saying. But he, I mean, he we, says he's happy with he's worked with both. Yeah. Can we yeah, make yeah. a motion? Can we approve? Give basically make a motion to approve the fire chief to purchase. No. What, Let's no, just make. Sure. I'll make the motion that we um, use Bergeron, which is the lowest bidder, right? Just to confirm. Um, it's for the lowest out of the two that he's right For on. open, yep. for, yes, lowest out of the two for the complete package for the open frame system. For a total cost. For a total cost of $40,778.58. Do we have a second? Um, what's the price? $40,000. $40,778. Because the closed frame is the forty-five thousand. Right. Right. I would say pending the approval of Tom, um, but other than that, because he's the one that's using it. He's already approved. Uh, he's hey, he waved I'm that. I'm way behind. Tom okay. waved that. Ain't no approval now. He could have done. He could have picked before. Oh, there. I will. Okay. I will second your motion. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So we have. I mean, motion. I know he don't care, but you we, know, I hear we have a second. And um, did did somebody go? Amanda, do you go through and make sure these things are both comparable, like they have the same, we're, they're the Tom same components? Same yes, so Tom and I both did um, this morning, and the only difference is the open versus enclosed. Okay. Everything else is But I meant, person. oh sorry, Reynolds versus Bergeron. Oh. Um, make sure those two, like, were, were those are kind of um, apples to apples. Wait, 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 hold on. I just want to stop for a second. So, one of them's three phase. Do we have three phase at the fire station? Do we know if we have three phase? And then the other one's single phase. Boy, I would be surprised if what so, we have down there isn't three phase, but I don't know the answer so to that. that's the difference. Because we used to have a big hose dryer. <laughs> I keep looking at you, Scott. I know I should have. Sorry. You're just so still the here. Other, <laughs> the three phase compressor is 18,000, and the single phase compressor is 23,000. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. the difference. That's that's the difference between Reynolds and... No, that's the difference between the two Bergeron posts. <coughs> and one's open and well, one's closed. Well, it's closed and unenclosed. Right. Is the, right. So the, the difference. So the single that's, phase is enclosed. Right. So but we need to also, make sure... So if we don't have three-phase power at the fire station, which we don't... I don't know why we would unless our last one... Required. Well... Uh, what else yeah. is down there? So we used to have this big honking hose yeah. dryer. Tom's. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Did the lights in every town in town, so maybe it wasn't three phase, but it should have been. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Um, but again, I guess that's a question that I don't know. So okay. we just approving that, adding mm -hmm. the logistics checkout. So, but isn't voltage on uh, the Reynolds one? It says either or, right? Yeah, but I've got some either or stuff and you don't want to run, you know, it's like running my welder on 120 or... Or, yeah, it says voltage 230, single phase 60 amps, or 208, 230, 463 phase 60 amps. And there's a... For 27. Huh. So it seems like very different. Three stage seven Thanks. and a half, huh? So theirs is definitely, the Bergeron is definitely bigger. It's got a seven and a half horsepower. Yeah. Three stage mm -hmm. 
Three four no, no, actually no, because when you go back to the Reynolds one in their options, there's a seven point five horsepower upgrade at the bottom on the bottom. Oh left. down here, yeah. yep, yep. Which does not say if you're upgrading that, that isn't uh, there's no electrical requirement called out on that upgrade. Uh, Jesus, we shouldn't be doing this. I, I agree. I think this is something that Tom needs to make an executive decision on. Does he need this from us tonight? Amanda, do you know? I mean, we need for it to follow our procurement policy. Yeah. You guys got to give us permission to spend this money. Yes. So, can we the, give you permission to spend this capacity for a three phase? For the compressor. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. All, all right. right. I would okay. didn't think that would go by. Good. So yeah. the original motion stands. The, all right. So we're going to roll with Danny. Danny's motion to accept the Bergeron quote for 40778 Okay. All right. Back to any more discussion on that. I second it. Yeah. So right to that. All right. So all in favor of approving that um, Bergeron <laughs> for the all right. SC. Yes. BA. Good job. You. Bring All in favor, say aye. 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 Danny, are you aye? Aye, 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 aye. Okay. All opposed? Thanks, Amanda. Nay. No, 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 no. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Tom. In absentia. Uh, uh, all right. Select board reports. New business or old business? I just have a, a really, really quick, crazy idea that I want to talk twice about thinking about uh, all of the work that potentially JP Seacard is going to be doing in Harvick. I think we should ask them to sponsor the fireworks for next year for the Memorial Day Parade. Oh, sure. What's all the work they're going to be doing? Well, we've, they're potentially, I mean, I feel like we keep seeing them and we keep hiring them for stuff. It's like not the craziest idea. No, it's a good plan. Yeah. But I don't know. They have not paying their bills on time, so I don't know if they're going to give us any money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much money. Yeah, no. it's like three grand. But seeking a uh, six. sponsorship. Six. 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 Oh, yeah. Next year will be ten. But For 20 minutes. Uh, I'm just saying. That's a great idea. That's a good idea. $2,500 for work. I think that's a kickback, but we'll have to look at the books. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, I, I like to put a spin on this. <laughs> um, just did old business. I did ask at the end of last meeting about um, uh, getting an update on computer security. You'll yeah. do that yeah. sometime this summer. I don't care when. Yeah, we have. I mean, totally. I gave you that update. I know, but I need a more <laughs> I need a more detailed update in this forum. Okay. Ideally, and yeah. then sometime before, like, I don't know, September. Our network is four or five. Excellent. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> well, yeah. Love it. Um, Anything else? I spoke to the Civic Standard. They were willing to collaborate on us setting up these uh, kiosk signs at the LVRT trailhead. And so that's just in the work. I, yeah, I spoke. think Tracy's been trying to. So you've been trying to solicit uh, vendors, which is the avenue to take. And yep. mm -hmm. Honestly, that's administration of grant funds that might need to be added to that position, maybe not necessarily Harry's but She's not looking for contractors to yeah, install the Yeah, she called me. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. No, you're saying generally the town is in need of, a, uh, of, a, of, of somebody who's a project manager, grant administrator, right? Right. Some of the other yeah. other right. Other right. Other right. Yeah, we don't need to bring that no, I know. Yeah, Danny, no, no. Danny yeah. was just bringing that up. But, yeah. It's just a side. No, note. the fact that Tracy's actually doing that is good. Is good, but no, it's, we, need, we have a lot of need. We have a lot of need in that exact thing right there. We have a uh, training coming yes. up for project management for the team. Good, for the team, yeah. good deal. Tuesday morning. I have no meetings. Can I just bring yeah, some Tuesday morning else, meetings? Uh, was there anything else in that point? Carry on. Um, so we're not meeting again until the end of July. We hope. We that's the plan. That is the um, we also have we have it posted that we are accepting bids for the two pieces of property that are for sale July eighth. My question is, are we planning on reviewing any offers at the July meeting? And if we are, then we should approve our sale of real estate before we discuss any offers. So I'm just wondering, like, we don't have to. 
Okay, but I was just curious, like, do we have a rough plan? I mean, we're telling people that they have to the 8th. Yeah. So are we why, mostly thinking... I don't even want to go into why on May 16th we said two weeks and now we're going to July 8th. But. Well, I don't know. It's just what's posted. It's, what's yeah. po it's what Casey posted. I read, so, the, minute, I read um, the minutes today. We said on the 16th that we were going to post it in two weeks. But we missed one of the deadlines to post we it. Didn't, it I didn't miss nothing. <laughs> Our office did. So, and, and so it was um, delayed. And then so just saying that... If we don't decide what the timeline is tonight, then we're deciding the end of July. And then if we're deciding what the timeline is the end of July, then we're talking about August for actual reviewing. I don't want to review anything unless I don't want to review any bids unless we have a policy. Why not? Because the whole point of having a policy is to. We've so already put sounds policies. like we've got work to do. All I'm, right. just, I'm just okay. wondering if we're right. planning on. A I think it's okay. We have conveyed real estate. Prior to having this policy, yeah, we yeah. could do okay. it again. But if you I want think we to, met everything in the policy. Yeah, I would be concerned if we didn't if we didn't do everything that we said we we're going to do in the policy. But I think we might have. What do you think? We have an unofficial policy, just that we haven't. You know, well, I think we we did it. We we the actions that we took. Doing it according to the statute, yeah. anyway. Yeah, right. the actions that so. we took. I think the policy follows it. But I agree with you. We need. To. If we're not going to, you're the one that's got to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, all right. So you know, I'm not. Yeah. You're just sitting around. I can just call you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, anything else on uh, reports, new business, old business? <sighs> okay, uh, could I have a motion to go into executive session to include the town manager and to include the interim manager, mm -hmm. Harvey Electric, to discuss contracts? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Section 313, section uh, statute. Uh, Title? No. I'm all screwed up. 313 1 A. 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 1 